Hey guys, Chris Fix here, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're tackling a sneaky problem, one that many drivers overlook but can lead to some serious headaches down the road. We're talking about a check engine light that doesn't work, or more accurately, a check engine light that to be working but isn't actually doing its job. The check engine light, also known as the malfunction indicator lamp, or EMIL for short, is your car's main way of telling you something's wrong under the hood. It's the primary communication tool your car uses to alert you to potential issues. Think of it like a smoke detector for your car, a crucial warning system that can save you from bigger problems. You hope it never goes on because, when it does, it usually means something needs attention. But you absolutely need to know it works and that it's functioning correctly. It can alert you to a wide range of issues from minor inconveniences like a loose gas cap, which is a very common culprit, to a more serious problem like a failing catalytic converter, which can be quite costly to repair. If the light isn't working as it should or has been disabled, you could miss serious problems that could cause long-term damage, fail emissions tests, which can prevent you from registering your vehicle, or even break down unexpectedly on the side of the road. Always check that the light comes on briefly when you first turn the key in the ignition. It should illuminate for a few seconds as part of the car's self-check sequence. If it doesn't light up at all during this startup sequence, you've definitely got a problem that needs investigating. So let's dive into some of the most common causes of a malfunctioning check engine light and explore how to diagnose and fix them. All right, let's start with the basics. When that check engine light refuses to illuminate, don't immediately jump to the worst case scenario. First, let's check the easiest culprits, the components that are designed to be easily replaceable. We're talking about the bulb itself, the small light source, that illuminates the check engine symbol. And of course, the fuse. A blown fuse can cut power to the entire instrument cluster or just specific lights. Before diving in, perform a simple key on test. Turn the ignition to the on position, but don't start the engine. If the check engine light doesn't come on during this bulb check, along with the other warning lights, it indicates a potential problem. The most common reason, the bulb might be burnt out. Over time, these small bulbs can fail, just like any other light source. To access the bulb, you'll need to remove the instrument cluster from the dashboard. This usually involves removing a few screws and carefully disconnecting any wiring harnesses. Once the cluster is out, find the check engine bulb, which is typically marked on the back of the cluster. Carefully remove the bulb holder and inspect it. Look for any signs of damage or corrosion. If the bulb appears blackened, broken, or the filament is visibly damaged, replace it with a new bulb of the correct type. If the bulb is fine, the next step is to check the fuse for the instrument cluster. The fuse protects the circuit from overloads and a blown fuse can prevent the check engine light from working. Locate the fuse box, which is usually under the dashboard or in the engine compartment, and then consult your owner's manual to identify the correct fuse for the instrument cluster. Carefully remove the fuse and inspect it. If the fuse is blown, meaning the small wire inside is broken or the glass is blackened, it needs to be replaced. When replacing a fuse, always replace it with one of the same amperage rating. Using a fuse with a higher amperage can damage the electrical system. After replacing the bulb or fuse, reconnect the battery if you disconnected it earlier. Now repeat the key on test. Turn the ignition to the on position and observe the check engine light. If the light works, illuminating briefly and then turning off. Congratulations, you've solved the problem, but if the light still refuses to cooperate, don't worry, there's more to check. We'll need to dig a little deeper to diagnose the issue. Let's move on to the wiring and see if there are any breaks or shorts in the system. If the bulb and fuse are both in good working order, then the wiring itself could very well be the issue. Carefully inspect the wiring harness located behind the instrument cluster. Check for any loose, frayed, or otherwise damaged wires. Also, check all the connections right at the cluster itself, and then trace the wiring as it makes its way toward the ECU. Look closely for any signs of heat damage, pinched wires, or evidence of rodent chewing. If you do happen to find a damaged section of wire, go ahead and repair it properly with a secure splice and some heat shrink tubing. Also, be sure to inspect the main harness where it connects to the ECU, ensuring that all connections are secure and clean. If you see any corrosion, clean it off carefully with electrical contact cleaner. Still no luck in finding the issue? Then the problem you're facing might actually be deeper than you initially thought. If everything else checks out and you've exhausted other possibilities, the ECU itself could very well be at fault. The ECU directly controls the check engine light, so if its driver circuit fails, the light simply won't illuminate or work. 
Use an OBD2 scanner to see if the ECU properly communicates. If it doesn't, it may be faulty, or perhaps it's simply not getting power. Be sure to check the ECU fuses. Also check the relays to rule out any simple power delivery issues. Remember, ECU failures are relatively rare and can be tricky to diagnose. Replacing or repairing an ECU usually requires the expertise of a pro. So if you strongly suspect the ECU, it's definitely time to consider seeking professional help. Let's now talk a bit more about when it's best to call in the experts. Many check engine light issues can be resolved with a bit of know-how and the right approach. It's often tempting to dive right in and try to fix the problem yourself, and that's perfectly fine for some of the simpler issues. Most of these issues can be fixed with basic tools and a good dose of patience. Taking your time and following instructions carefully can often lead to a successful repair, but if you've already checked the bulb, making sure it's not simply a burnt-out indicator and the fuse and inspected the wiring for any obvious damage or loose connections and still can't seem to pinpoint the source of the problem or solve it, it might be time to consider other options. It might be time to call a professional. Don't hesitate to reach out to a qualified mechanic when you're in over your head. Mechanics have advanced tools and diagnostic equipment at their disposal, allowing them to test circuits, read error codes, and pinpoint faults quickly and accurately. They can often identify the root cause of the problem in a fraction of the time it would take a novice. Don't risk making things worse. Attempting repairs beyond your skill level can sometimes lead to further damage and more costly repairs down the line. Complex electrical repairs are best left to the pros as they require specialized knowledge and equipment. If you suspect ECU or engine control unit problems or instrument cluster issues, which can be tricky to diagnose without the right tools, or just feel completely stuck and overwhelmed by the complexity of the problem, it's always a good idea to get expert help. A professional mechanic can provide a proper diagnosis and recommend the best course of action. Remember, a working check engine light is vital for alerting you to potential problems, for your car's overall health and most importantly your safety on the road. Start simple with your troubleshooting, know your limits when it comes to automotive repair, and don't ignore this important warning system. Ignoring a check engine light can lead to more serious and expensive problems down the road. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, take care of your vehicles, and happy wrenching.